Hi everybody and welcome! In today's video I'm going to cover a topic that many of you guys have asked me which is the difference between working in academia and at a startup company. To uh, find the differences there I'm going to go through a number of different aspects that I think are central to describe what it feels to work in a startup and what it feels to work in a, an academic environment. Let's start with the first one which is the working environment. So my experience uh, in academia is that there's a quite a lot of formality there. So this may depend on culture and I think like that's also the case, that's also what I've experienced personally. So when I was back in Italy as a student, I noticed that the kind of like overall situation there was quite formal and there's what there was quite a lot of distance between students and professors this changed quite a lot when I did my PhD in the UK so professors would treat you more as a peer uh, but overall I would say that even between professors or researchers there's quite a lot of formality there another aspect that's a uh, very uh, I would say like characteristic of a uh, university is that you tend to work by yourself. So in my experience as a PhD student, I spent basically three years doing uh, my research almost completely isolated. And I mean, there was a great PhD room and so there were a lot of like supportive uh, like researchers and so we could share like our ideas. There were seminars where you could hear uh, about hear from like other researchers and understanding what they were doing and just like comparing what you, uh, with what you were doing. But at the same time, at the end of the day, it really was like every man uh, for himself. So all of this working environment is quite different in a startup company. So first of all, I can't think of a place that's more laid back than a startup company. And then uh, the great thing about a startup company, that's something that I love so much, is that usually you work uh, in teams. And it, it's, although I should say that this is, uh, th that is like a very strange type of like teamwork that you have, because yes, you work in teams and you all work like towards a same goal, but then at the same time, you are like the chief of yourself in a sense. Uh, that's because uh, in a startup there aren't many resources so everyone should be able like to kind of be accountable and be like fully uh, responsible for himself or herself and so like at Melo Drive this is what we did uh, quite a lot with uh, like all the all the fellas uh, there so and it was like a great uh, working environment because there was this mix of inf being completely like laid back and at the same time working together towards a common goal. The second aspect that I want to cover is learning. If you're watching this video and you're familiar with this channel, uh, probably you are a lot like me. So you love learning a lot of new things. So this aspect is very important. So let's take a look at uh, university first. So my experience is that at university, you're able to concentrate on a few topics and gain an extreme knowledge about those topics, research topics. And this is true, for example, when you do a PhD. So in my case, for example, I was focusing on uh, finding certain computational and mathematical models that could describe the way music changes in societies, the way uh, compositional styles change and musical ideas spread. Now, I started that I had like a vague idea of, like of the topic, but then after two years, three years of research in the space, I built up a lot of literature. And when I looked back towards like the end of my uh, PhD, I just recognized that I did a lot of work and then at that point I was like extremely expert like in that uh, research niche. Now uh, what happens in a startup company is quite different. So actually I would say quite the opposite because usually in a startup com company you are asked to learn a lot of things and so you're gonna master a lot of new skills but this doesn't mean necessarily that you're gonna 
<laughs> completely master all of those new things, but you're going to be like familiar. So the difference between university and a startup company here is that at the university, you're going to have like a very deep dive, deep learning. <laughs> well, deep learning, not like the, the way you know deep learning is, but just like the way you learn stuff, right? Uh, whereas uh, in uh, a startup company, you are going to have a, a, a kind of like broad learning process. And here I have an example that I think like it really like resonates with this, at least like on the on the startup side. So uh, we had this amazing employee at Mellow Drive. His name is Christian. And so we hired him as a sound designer, but uh, he started like doing work as a sound designer. But after a while, uh, we needed extra help for Python programming. So he picked uh, Python programming and it helped out there. Then after a few months, we needed to like change his role towards more uh, product management and even becoming like the product owner. So he started to like study and uh, get like all of these new skills and he became an amazing product owner for us. And then he also started doing some web development. So basically in a couple of years, this guy started as a sound designer and then he found himself learning to, um, to code in Python, to code web applications and to know, to be like very good at product management and uh, yeah, product planning as well. The third aspect that I want to cover is impact, the type of impact that you're going to have uh, at your work. So uh, when you are in academia, the, the, the most of the impact is going to be within the scientific uh, community. So you're going to do some research and then you're going to share that with your peers and then you're going to comment on that, you're going to refine that. But usually what I found is that the research that you carry out tends to remain inside the um, the the borders like of the of academia and so this is like something that I that I wasn't really like okay about because like I wanted to have like way more impact on exter the external world on society now again uh, saying that the impact of research in academia is only limited to uh, academia itself is obviously like an understatement because uh, it really depends on the department and the research that you do. Obviously, if you're doing research in cancer treatment, that is going to have a huge impact on society and way bigger than I'll ever be able to have like doing research in AI music. But all in all, I have the feeling that, yeah, in academia, you tend to remain like in your ivory tower. So in a startup environment, usually it's extremely important that you are going to have a huge impact on the uh, external world and the success of your work is measured on the impact that you're going to have on on society and the external world and so the whole purpose of a startup company is to have a huge impact so in that respect there's a huge difference between academia and a startup company the fourth aspect that i want to cover is financials so when you work at a university, not as a researcher, but as a lecturer or as a professor, you get financial stability. No matter what you do, most of the time, you're going to get a paycheck at the end uh, of each month. And so this is like really good because like you feel safe and you're not stressed out about like your financial situation. This is in stark contrast to working in a startup company. Now, if you are uh, happen to be a co-founder, you'll have like some very stressful time, uh, not necessarily just because of like the business itself, but also like in terms of like financials, because if you want to pay salaries to your employees and yourself, you have to have money, cash in the bank. And there are only two ways you can have that. So one is investors and the other one is making revenues. But if you're at an early st stage a startup company, it's difficult to get investments and it's also somehow difficult to get revenues. So you may find yourself having issues, financial issues, 
And so this is both for your employees as well as like for yourself. And also I want to add here is that you, if you're a co-founder, usually what you want to do is like get from the revenues that you get, you want just like to reinvest it, that money in the company so that it can grow even more and become like more sustainable. So don't expect to be financially stable if you decide to be a startup co-founder and you're still somehow at risk if you are a startup employee. That's just part of the game. The next aspect that I want to cover is the key drivers. In academia, the main driver is publish. So as a, as a lecturer, as a researcher, you'll hear that the mandatory thing for you to do is publish, publish, publish. There's an old adage in academia that's publish or perish. And it's somehow true because if you want to advance your career in academia, so if you want to get a full professorship, you have to produce a, a lot of like great quality uh, research and publish that in internationally uh, reputable and a very high quality uh, journals and conferences. The key driver for a startup company is completely different. It's focused on finding a problem and solving a problem. It may feel that solving a problem is probably more difficult than finding a problem, but again, if you're watching this, probably you are a technologist. For guys like us who love building things, it's way easier to uh, solve a problem than like finding the right problem. And this is something uh, we had a lot of issues with at Melodrive. So when we were building our AI music engine, so we were so much caught up in building the technology and amazed about like the research that we were doing that we lost of track uh, about the fact that we weren't necessarily solving a real world problem at the time. So. This is like something that can never been uh, overlooked. So you have to really uh, find the, the right problem that your customer has and then try to solve it. At the same time, there's a, another important driver for a startup that's that of communicating your solution and the problems that you solve to your customers. And again, this is something that's difficult to do if you come from a more technical background, because what we love doing as technologists is to build amazing uh, applications to, great, uh, to create some great AI stuff, but not necessarily to communicate that to the external world. And this is something that, I mean, it took me a lot of time to understand and the reason why I've started like the Sound of AI channel is probably because of these uh, un kind of like re revelation that I had at a certain point because like if you don't communicate what you build, what you do in an effective way, then you're not going to create a sustainable company by any means. To wrap up this video, I want to just uh, revise some of the things that we said and uh, make some conclusions. Taking a job in academia is ideal if you want to undertake a research without any constraints. So if you have some abstract research topic that you want to explore and you know that you're not going to find <laughs> like any real world application for that, then academia is ideal for you because as long as you publish high quality research, that's your deal. At the same time, academia is ideal if you are looking for uh, financial stability. And I know like that many of us are looking for that. But I want to stress here that this is not true for all the academic jobs. So if you if you become a research fellow, you are by no means like financially stable because every two or three years you, you need to find like a new position. But if you happen to land a job as a lecturer or even better as a professor, then you are set because you're going to get uh, a paycheck every month. Now, another thing uh, that you have to consider if you want to take a job uh, in academia is that you need to love teaching because teaching is a big part of the academic life. OK, so now let's focus on the startup side. So when is it preferable for you to land a job 
at a startup company or even better to found one. Okay, so first of all, you have to understand that you need to be a risk taker and then that you should be able to cope with stress very well. So I've heard a metaphor probably a few years back that I think like describe what it what it feels to work in a startup company very well. So working in a startup company is very similar to <laughs> to jumping off a an airplane and then while you are diving building crafting the parachute. So it's full of adrenaline it's a great feeling, but it's very, very high risk. So if you're not a, a risk taker or if you can't take those risks because of like financial reasons or like personal reasons, so don't go for a job at a startup company and let alone found a startup company. A job at a startup company is also ideal for you if you love learning a lot of new things. If you're like me who love learning many new programming languages, new frameworks, but also things that are completely outside of my comfort zone, like, I don't know, just like um, business development or customer care. So you should probably consider uh, taking a job uh, in a startup or even better, like founding a startup. A job at a startup company is also great if you want to have a big impact on society. Now, it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to have a huge impact on society, just like statistically, because most of the startup companies just fail. But uh, also like the gain that you may get out of like working at a startup, like it's very high. So high risk, high gains. Okay, guys, so I hope you've learned a little bit of the differences between working in a startup environment and in academia. And I hope like you, you got some value like out of this video. If that's the case, please consider subscribing for getting more videos like this. And let me know your experience of working in a startup environment or working in academia. So what's your take on this? Great. So it's all for today and I'll see you next time. Cheers.